Our verse today is Ezekiel chapter 47, verse 9. And everywhere the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live, and there will be very many fish. For this water goes there, that the waters of the sea may become fresh. So everything will live where the river goes. The book of Ezekiel reveals God to his people through prophecies of his powerful judgments and tender mercies. And it is summarized in passages like chapter 6 verse 7 which says, You will know that I am the Lord. Chapters 1 to 32 of Ezekiel presents the prophecies about the destruction of Jerusalem and the Gentile nations while chapters 33 to 48 present the prophecies after the destruction and fall of Jerusalem about God's blessings, His glory and restoration of Israel. The destruction of Jerusalem and the temple that is God's dwelling place and the loss of the promised land since they were already taken into exile meant a state of hopelessness, of sinfulness and of punishment, that is, God's judgment upon them. So, the prophecy of the river flowing from the temple is about restoring hope and God's returning presence to his people. In our passage, the angel took Ezekiel on a tour of the new temple, where a life-giving river flowed from the inner sanctuary of the temple, through the temple, down to the Arabah, that is a desolate and dry area south of the Dead Sea, and it ends up in the sea. It transforms the salty Dead Sea into a fresh, life-giving river. The Dead Sea is the lowest point on earth and the world's deepest salt lake where nothing can live because of its high salt content. So the refreshing of the Dead Sea, now having a lot of fish and the growth of trees and plants on either side of the flowing river is a renewal of hope and a reminder of God's presence and blessings from His holy abode. Since the Jews had lost the temple of Jerusalem, the idea of the temple became renewed, no more located in Jerusalem, but in the heart. Jesus refers to his body in the New Testament in John chapter 2, verse 19 to 20. He says, destroy this temple and in three days I will build it up. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, St. Paul says, do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit? God's dwelling is the temple of our hearts, where he nourishes us and others in the world, like the river from the temple, even the spiritually dead, like the Dead Sea. This symbolic prophecy by Ezekiel illustrates that God is at the center of all graces, of all blessings and life, and he never abandons us, but he builds his holy dwelling in us to bless and nourish the world. The Basilica of St. John Lateran, whose feast of dedication we celebrate today, also bears the same sense and implication of God's presence with his children in his church. The Lateran Basilica, the mother of all churches, and the official cathedral of the Pope as the Bishop of Rome, is the first Christian church in the West. It not only gave Christians in Rome an exclusive place for worship, but also architecturally equaled or even surpassed every other monument built for the pagan gods. This was a remarkable period in the history of Christianity and the history of the world. The Basilica was dedicated at different times, first to our most holy Savior, then to St. John the Baptist, and later to St. John the Evangelist. Thus, the official title of the church is the Archbasilica of the Most Holy Savior and St. John the Baptist and the Evangelist at the Lateran. Hence, this feast of the Lateran Basilica, a mark of religious freedom, especially for Christians at that time, encourages us to keep strong, to remember and celebrate our past and Catholic heritage. We can recall and feel the joy of the first Christians as they gathered to worship as one in a new physical temple at the Lateran, 
that represents a union of the temple of God in their hearts from where other churches emanated. Let us pray. Dear Lord, bless our hearts and help us to make it a holy dwelling place for you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you and I wish you a lovely day.